Ross Wilkie has spent the last three years flying the Wisconsin side country. The side country is something that is easily accessible. It's not out in the middle of nowhere, it's not remote. It may be right in front of your face sometimes, right off the side of the road, but it's definitely not your on-the-map airport. After three years of flying in this dynamic environment, Ross feels ready to work on his next aviation goal. I think my flying has improved a great deal, certainly since I started. Now I kind of need to prove myself to myself and take that extra step, so that's why I decided to do the uh, short takeoff and landing demo for, for this year. I'm Ross, and in three days, I'm going to be doing my first stole competition. STOL, meaning short takeoff and landing, is the ability of a pilot and his plane to take off and land in the shortest possible distance. Regardless of how your plane flies, when you land it, you must land on the mark, or as close to it as possible, and stop in the shortest possible distance for the highest score. No matter what you fly, you should set aviation goals for yourself. It might not be flying the Wisconsin side country or participating in your first STOL demo, but as you work toward your goal, you'll become a better, safer, more proficient pilot in the process. Morning, right, traffic, Husky 370 Sierra Lima is left now when runway one air turf, morning. And so we're gonna aim for the second set of cones just after the truck. I want to see somebody setting personal goals for themselves like you're doing with the STOL demo. Most of my aviation goals have been check ride driven. What do you do in the approach to get ready for a STOL or a short landing? I was told by somebody who really knows what they're doing. By the time you're like, what, a beam, what would be the numbers, have the airplane configured. Don't have anything else to do, be at your speed, and then that way you have nothing else to worry about because, you know, from now on, like, my eyes are pretty much going to be outside. You know, I don't know exactly where my airspeed is, but I'm just waiting to feel the sink of the airplane. And as we just turned into the wind, so it picked up a little bit, so I backed off on the throttle. And so now it's now it's sinking, but we're a little bit high, so I'm backing off, but I'm still working, uh, still working the throttle a little bit. Until we get down into ground effect, which I don't want to be in too early, especially with how warm it is out tonight, it's not going to float much. scratch. So you judge from where the line is to where you stop. If your mains touch anywhere before the line, that's a scratch, so that's a DQ for that round. So the name of the game is consistency. You want to hit that spot and you want to be comfortable bringing the airplane down, hitting the brakes without nosing over and hopefully in a short distance. But the other, another technique uh, that I told, and I, I'm, I'm interested to hear your opinion on this, uh -huh. is um, short final. I will turn my car beat off. Just because you want to have that power in this in, in, in any sort of scenario, like um, and even like right now, like I'll probably turn it off because it you know it makes a difference on when you're feathering. Yep. Um, but also going into a strip, like you know, if something does go wrong, you want to have everything there when you need it. Yep, that is the way that I was taught. There are definitely risks involved. You're flying you're flying close to the edge. You're flying close to the ground. You're in a low speed. You're dirty. You know, and, and you don't have time to recover if, if something goes south, for the most part. Um, so, I mean, it is, there is a lot of risk there. So you need to be really comfortable being behind the airplane. You know, I think back to my 152 time, and so much of it was spent being ahead of the airplane and making sure you're way ahead of the airplane. Whereas now, you're 200 feet up, you're 45 miles an hour, your flaps are out, and your nose is in the air, for the most part. And then, not only that, to correct, any sort of sudden drop, you've got to add a little bit of power. Obviously, if something happens to the engine, there's not a whole lot of room there. You definitely need to be comfortable not only flying the airplane, but you need to be comfortable with your setup and knowing that, you know, your engine's properly taken care of, you got your carb heat on when you need it, because it wouldn't take much to be in a really bad situation. On every flight, we accept a certain level of risk. As safe pilots, we need to manage that risk with proficiency and training. In stole flying, a pilot operates closer to the performance limits of an airplane and closer to the limits of their skill. Since high angle of attack, low velocity, takeoffs, and landings 
while the highest workload phases of side country flying, stole proficiency is a natural focus for side country pilots. But knowing the performance of the aircraft you fly isn't a skill limited to aviators flying off airport. It's one of the best things any pilot can do to mitigate risk and avoid loss of control in flight. Of the total number of non-commercial fixed wing accidents in the last 10 years, 12% were during takeoff and climb and 31% were during landings. We're at a good speed, so I'm gonna just start creeping the throttle out a little bit. There is such a headwind, I think if I back it down, it's just gonna start to fall. So there it is, just started to fall. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of power as we sink, but it's pretty flat out there. It's a pretty flat wing approach. And now I'm just keep, pretty much keeping the wings like we're, you know, fairly level. And I'm just doing it all just with, you know, little shots of power. And sometimes I creep into the left of those trees. I don't know that I'll need to today. Really, one of the biggest learning tools for me was just putting a GoPro in the back of my airplane. And especially in the beginning, like when everything was so new, you know, I would go back and watch those videos. I remember feeling like where the wind was and like what happened there and like and then judging, you know, whether it's, whether it's a good landing or a bad landing, you know, it, as it can be painful sometimes, you gotta watch those bad landings. You watch what you're doing you watch what the people you're flying with are doing, and then you look at what the best of the best are doing. Watch the Valdez videos. What are they doing? If you're in an nose dragger, what is that guy doing? I have seen incredible things done with an airplane with a nose wheel. You can look at that no matter what you're flying. One of the major draws to this kind of flying for me is this kind of flying offers a very measurable gauge of, of your improvement, whether it's being down in, inside of some trees or whether it's being um, you know, close to the ground and maneuvering. You know, there was a point when that felt very uncomfortable. It feels a lot more natural now. I know I can see my own improvement there and I can feel my own improvement just in, in how comfortable I am in the airplane. Flying A to B, you know, you can have challenging airspace, you can have challenging weather conditions, and that's all great, and that all expands your ability to fly into certain conditions. But this is local. I can go out, do this, measure, measure a different aspect of flying, which is important to me, which is knowing the airplane, being comfortable in the airplane, and just having fun. In the beginning, I had fun, but it was really stressful. A question we get asked all the time at the AOPA Air Safety Institute is how do I improve my skills while staying in my comfort zone? The short answer is, you can't. So you, you pick your 5,000 foot runway, and then you take your 1,000 foot runway, and you wait until you're just as comfortable on that before you go to the next one. And you have to do it in a safe way because you know as you're learning, like you're not gonna go out and do a Valdez and hang it on the prop and be dragging the, the tail wheel until you get to that line to just pull the power and just, you know, uh, that all comes, but you have to figure out, okay, how can I safely start to push it a little bit? Okay, so now you get into ground effect, and then you start easing it back, putting a little more power in, and then, oh wow, that nose is really up there, but I'm only two feet off the ground. You know, you, you figure out where that, where that line is. Light wind, hot, that's about 210. So I've been spending a lot of time practicing. Luckily, there's a few people at the airport that are always ready to fly. Jim in his 170, and he will be uh, flying in this year's Stoll demo at Oshkosh. So I've been practicing with him a lot, which is great because he is a phenomenal pilot. He knows how to fly his airplane extremely well. And so flying with people like that are that good, it elevates you. Flight of four, you guys ready? We're ready. Traffic, 9 or 9 or Alpha, flight forward, departing, 1 9 or Surf, we're going to uh, fly the pattern, depart to the north. The guys that I fly with are 
they're, they're short and they're consistently short. And so it's this benchmark to get to. And, and it's not, you know, you're not always locking up the brakes every time, but you got to make it look like you didn't have to try too hard. <laughs> Kind of split right now, Jim. Which way you want to do it? Um, say, which it was just straight out of south, right? Right. I'm probably just gonna make this a left base for going uh, west. Sounds good. If we go to Jay's place. Not on any maps. Um, we'll just follow me in. Um, it's probably about 11, 1200 feet long. Um, you gotta drop it over some trees. It's not too bad, but if you're not comfortable, of course, just go around. Roger, Roger. Uh, let's see orientation. Um, it's sort of like uh, southwest, northeast. There's a flag I just flew over here. Lynn, Lynn looks like it's about 200 or so. That might be right down the runway there at Jay's. We'll see. It's all of those trees on the south end. Oh, there's, a, there's a gap in them. You can get through them. Playing too short because there's an uphill. Uh, you see where the plane is on the ground. That's probably where you should aim for a touchdown point. Which is so you know, which is cool. Like you know, Jim coming around, two guys that have never been into this strip. Um, you know, giving a giving a reference point. That's a huge deal. Like that's that's important. I'm keeping quite a bit of power in because I know. I mean, it's a it's a fairly stiff wind that I know I'm going to drop. Like once I get into it, right. we're already pretty slow. So is that sort of like breathing of the strip, like what they did for you? It was, it was very like play by play, like here's where you should aim to touch down. A little bit of power. Because then once, then once we get over the trees, then I want to drop in. That, 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 that are going to embarrass me. I don't think this could have gone any better, actually. I'm uh, feel good about it. Yeah. Congratulations. That Thanks. was pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Yeah, it was a blast. Well, it looked great. You were uh, kind of the heavyweight out there and uh, looked pretty good to me. I didn't scratch. Yeah. I didn't bend my prop. So uh, it's a good thing. That's a good day. That is pretty spectacular. Great stuff.
was really uh, it was a special day to to share with him because it meant a lot to me and to see that he was uh, excited for me, excited to be there, um, and just and proud to see me out flying was that uh, was a really big deal. Now, what would you do different next time? Next time, I would uh, I would shed some fuel. Next time, be I might simple. go for a jog beforehand or something. Right. Milky Ross Husky A1B. Takeoff one, 235. Takeoff two, 219. Takeoff three, 248. Landing one, this is where it really counts, 257. Landing two, 265. <laughs> and landing three, 212. So that's uh, shortest takeoff, 219. Shortest landing is 212. Total score of 431. It's pretty interesting. Not happy with the score, but uh, it's 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 kind of consistent, which is funny. But uh, the last one, last one, I'm not surprised is much shorter. I had to nurse that in. I was lucky to get away with that landing. Just made it across, cut the power, and hit the brakes. And that one ended up being uh, being the best one, which is pretty cool. The next goal would be to uh, get some additional training in in the backcountry environment so that I'm safe, but to take this airplane and go out and have some fun with it in the mountains.